Book 21 in the Iliad, <clears throat> who fights between Achilles and the river's commander. The gods fight among themselves. Achilles drives the Trojans within their gates. Now, when they came to the ford of the full flowing river Xanthus, begotten of immortal Zeus, Achilles cut their forces in two. One half he chased over the plain towards the city by the same way that the Bucians had taken, when flying panic stricken on the preceding day with Hector fallen triumph. This way did they fly, pell mell, and Hera sent down a thick mist in front of them to stay them. The other half were hemmed in by the deep silver eddy stream and fell into it with a great uproar. The waters resounded and the banks rang again as they swam hither and thither with loud cries and whirling eddies. As the locusts fly into a river before the blast of grass fire, the flame comes on and on till at last it overtakes them and they huddle into the water. Even so was the eddying stream of Zan Xanthus filled with uproar of men and horses all struggling in confusion before Achilles. Forthwith the hero left his spear upon the bank, leaning it against a tamarisk bush, and flung it into the river like a god. Armed with his sword only, fell was his purpose as he hewed the Trojans down on every side. Their dying groans rose hideous as the sword smote them, and the river ran red with blood. As when fish flies stared before a huge dolphin, and fill every nook and corner of some fair haven, for he is sure to eat all he can catch, even so did the Trojans cower under the banks of the mighty river, and when Achilles' arms grew weary with killing them, he drew twelve youths alive out of the water to sacrifice and revenge for Patroclus, son of Aniotis. He drew them out like a dazed fawns, bound their hands behind them with the girdles of their own shirts, and gave them over to his men. To take back to the ships. Then he sprang into the river, thirsting for still further blood. There he found Lachion, son of Priam, seed of Dardanus, as he was escaping out of the water. He it was whom he had once taken prisoner when he was in father's vineyard, having set upon him by night as he was cutting young shoots from a wild tree to make the wicker size of a cherry. Achilles then cut him to his sorrow unawares, and sent him by sea to Lemnos, where the son of Jason bought him. But a guest friend, Etion of Imbros, freed him with a great sum and sent him to Arisabi, whence he had escaped and returned to his father's house. He had spent eleven days happily with his friends after he had come from Lemnos, but on the twelfth heaven again delivered him to the hands of Achilles, who was to send him to the house of Hades. So lay against his will, he was unarmed when Achilles caught sight of him, and had neither helmet nor shield, nor yet had he any spear, for he had thrown all his armor from him onto the bank and was sweating with his struggles to get out of the river, so that his strength was now failing him. Then Achilles said to himself in his surprise, What marvel do I see here if this man can come back alive after having been sold over into Lemnos? I shall have the Trojans also, whom I have slain rising from the world below, could not even the waters of the grey sea imprison him, as they do many another, whether he will or no. This time let him taste my spear that I may know for certain whether Mother Earth, who can keep an even strong man down, will be able to hold him, or whether thence too he will return. Thus did he pause and ponder, but Lachon came up to him days and trying hard to embrace his knees, for he would fain live not die. Achilles pressed at him with his spear, meaning to kill him, but Lachon ran crouching up to him and caught his knees, whereby the spear passed over his back and struck in the ground, hungry, though it was for blood. With one hand he caught Achilles' knees as he besought him, and with the other he clutched the spear and would not let it go. Then he said, Achilles, have mercy upon me and spare me, for I am your supplement. If I was in your tents, and I first broke bread on the day when you took me prisoner in the vineyard, after which you sold me away to Lemnos, far from my father and my friends, and I brought you for the price of a hundred oxen. I have paid three times as much to gain my freedom. It is but twelve days that I have come to Ilium after much suffering, and now cruel fate has again thrown me into your hands. Surely Father Zeus might must hate me that he has given me over to you a second time. Short of life indeed did my mother, Lavatho, bear me, daughter of Ace at Altius, of Altus, who reigns over the warlike Lilia and holds the steep passes on the river Satanios. Priam married his daughter along with any other woman, and two sons are born of her, both of whom he will have slain. For Spear slew noble Polyorus, as he was fighting in the front ranks, and now evil will fear befall me, for I fear that I shall not save you, since heaven has delivered me over to you. Furthermore, I say, and I must say to your heart, spare me, for I am not of the same womb as Hector, who slew your brave and noble comrade. Of such words did the princely son of Priam to seek Achilles. Achilles answered him sternly, Idiot, said he, talk not to me of ransom, and so Patroclus fell. I prefer to give the Trojans order, and sold beyond the sea many of those whom I had taken alive, but not, not a man sh shall live of those whom heaven delivers into my hands of the city of Ilium, and of all Trojans it shall fare hardest of the sons of Priam. Therefore, my friends, you shall do that. Why should you whine in this way, Patroclus fell? He was a better man than you are. I too see not how I am breaking godly. I am son unto a noble father, and have a goddess for my mother. But the hands of doom and death overshadowed me all as surely. They will come, either at dawn or dark, or at noontide, whom I shall take my life also in battle, either with his spear or with an arrow sped from his bow. Thus did he speak, and Macron's heart sank with him. He loosed his hold of the spear and held out both hands before him. But Achilles drew his keen blade and struck him by a collarbone on his neck. He plunged his huge sword into him to the very hilt whereon he lay at full length on the ground, with his dark blood bubbling from him till the earth was soaked. Then Achilles caught him lightly and flung him into the river to go downstream, vaunting over him the while, saying, Lie there among the fishes who will lick the blood from your wounds and gloat over it. Your mother shall not lay you on any briars to mourn you, but Eddie's a commander shall bear you into the broad bosom of the sea. There shall a fishes flee on a phantom like you on, as there darts under the dark ripple of waters, so perish all of you, so we reach the citadel of strong Ilium, you in flight, I following after to destroy you, the river with its broad silver streams shall serve you in no steep, for all the bulls you offered him and all the horses that you flung living into his waters nonetheless miserably shall you perish, still there is not a man of you that has paid in fall for the death of Patroclus and the havoc you brought among the Urgeans whom you have slain, while I held aloof from battle. So spoke Achilles, but the river grew more and more angry, and pondered within himself how he should stay the hand of Achilles and save the Trojans from disaster. Meanwhile, the son of Peleus, spear in hand, sprang upon Asapias, son of Peleus, to kill him. He was son of the broad river Axias and Herobia, and was daughters of Asimenias, for the river had lain with her. Asapias stood out upon the waters of the basin 
with a spear in either hand, and Xanthus filled him with courage, being angry for the death of the youth whom Achilles was slain ruthlessly within the waters. When they were close upon with one another, Achilles was first to speak, Who and whence you are you? said he, who dare to face me? Woe to the parents whose son stands before me, and the son of Pelagon answered, Great son of Achilles, why should you ask my lineage? I am from the fertile land of Paeonia, captain of the Paeonians, and it is now eleven days that I am at Ilium. I am of the blood of the river of Axios, and of Axios, that is the heirs of all the rivers that run. He begot the fame of warrior Pelagon, whose son had been called me, let us now fight Achilles. Thus did he defy him, Achilles raised the spear at the lane ash, as the perils failed of his book, the spears, for he could use his hands alike with one spear, he struck Achilles, shield, but did not pierce it, for the layer of gold gift of the gods stayed at the point, with other spear he raised the elbow of Achilles, right arm drawing dark blood of the spear itself, and by him and fixed itself in the ground, foiled of its bloody banquet. Then Achilles, feigned to kill him, hurled his spear at Asser Chaos, for that failed to hit him and struck the steep bank of the river, driving the spear half its length into the earth. The son of Pelias then drew his sword and sprang fiercely upon him. As a Chaos vainly tried to draw Achilles' spear out of the bank by main force, thrice did he tug at it, trying with all his might to draw it out, and thrice he had to leave off trying. The fourth time he tried to bend and break it, but ere he could do so, Achilles smote him with his sword and killed him. He struck him in the belly near the navel, so that all his bowels came gushing out on the ground, and the darkness of death came over him as he lay grasping. Then Achilles set his foot on his chest and soiled him of his armor, vaunting over him, saying, Lie there, begotten of the river, though you be, it is hard for you to strive with the offspring of Cronus' son. You declare yourself, sprung from the blood of the royal river, that I am of the seed of mighty Zeus. My father is Peleus, son of Picus, ruler over many men and their middens, and Heracus was the son of Zeus. Therefore, as Zeus is mightier than any river that flows into the sea, so are his children stronger than those of any river whatsoever.